OK. So the last test, the last test has simply told us how many rational roots we have, right? That's it. Just how many rational zeros that we're going to have in our problem. That was it. Didn't tell us anything about irrational. Didn't tell us anything about complex. Well, we, there's another test we can use that's going to help us kind of um, identify a little bit more about talking about our zeros. And that next rule is Descartes' rule of signs. Okay, so Descartes' rule of signs, what this tells us is the number, Amber, of positive and the number of negative real zeros. So now again, we're just going to be talking about real, but real can be imaginary. I'm sorry. Real can be <laughs> irrational, and it could also be um, irrational and rational as well. All right? So what is, how does this Descartes' rule of signs work? Descartes' rule of signs is going to say, let's first work on the positive. So we're going to have the number of positive real zeros is equal to the number of sign changes in a polynomial or in your function minus or minus an even integer. And I'll explain that in a second. All right. So let's go and take a look at, in this first problem, how many sign changes do we have? Well, our first term is what? Positive. And then the next one is negative, right? So we have one sign change. And then we go from negative to negative. That's not a sign change. And then we go to negative to positive. So that's two sign changes, right? So we could say there's two positive zeros or minus an even number, which the smallest even number is 2, right? So 2 minus 2 is 0. So that means there's either two positive real zeros or there's none. We don't know which one yet, but we know that by this test, we're not going to have one real zero, all right? Then the number of negative is the exact same thing, but for f of negative x. So let's do f of negative x. So we're going to do 3 times negative x cubed minus 4 times negative x squared minus 17 times negative x plus 6. So it's the exact same thing, but now we've got to make sure we evaluate for f of negative x. So remember, any negative number raised to an odd power is still going to produce a negative number. So negative x cubed is still negative. So now that negative x cubed times 3 will produce now a negative 3x cubed. Negative x squared is now turns to positive. So, and then times a negative 4 is now negative 4x squared. Negative 17 times negative x is now a positive 17x plus 6. So let's see how many sign changes we have here. Well, there's only one. So therefore, we could say here there is, so for positive real zeros, we have 2 or 0. But for the negative, we have, we're guaranteed to at least have 1. OK? So there's one negative real 0. Okay, so those are your two rules. And I've got one last problem to show you. 